A while back, we talked about the largest comet ever discovered. Well, now it seems we're going to be getting into another record-setting comet, but in a slightly different area. I'm Eric Malachite, and today on Science Get, we're going to tell you how you'll be able to see the comet with the largest historic outburst ever this summer. Astronomers suggest that we're going to see what looks like a luminous hourglass in the night sky this summer. This event is going to be a big deal, and we're going to tell you when and how you'll be able to see it. But be sure to stick around to the end of the video, as we've got a big announcement regarding the ScienceGet Discord, and it involves you. Yeah, that's right. You. The comet in question is called 17P Holmes. Holmes is what's known as a periodic comet orbiting between Mars and Jupiter. Every seven years, Holmes makes it closer to our neck of the solar backwoods, approaching Mars in its orbit. Its discovery came in November of 1892, and despite the fact that it's been relatively dim in our skies, it temporarily brightened by a factor of a million in 2007. In 2007, comet 17P Holmes briefly became visible to the naked eye, and during that same event became the largest object in the entire solar system. Not physically, obviously, but those familiar with astronomy know that even cometary comas and tails are considered to be quote-unquote objects in space. This is an animated movie showing 17P Holmes as it exploded to life, a time-lapse of observations taken by astronomers at the University of California over a period of nine days. The initial brightening, however, took less than 24 hours. Originally, this body was reported to only be about 3.6 kilometers wide, but by the time the comet's tail had erupted to life, its dust cloud was larger than the frickin' sun. The reason for this sudden outburst isn't really known but we are about to see something pretty mesmerizing this summer. Shortly after Comet 17P Holmes' brightening in October of 2007, scientists believed that the particles that had erupted from the comet's nucleus would have simply dispersed into space. But instead, the dust tail has actually persisted throughout its seven-year orbital cycle. The particles left behind actually circled the comet in an elliptical orbit, and now the particles have begun to gather near the original point where Comet 17P Holmes first erupted. This forewarning is thanks to a new model described by Mara Gritsevich, a planetary scientist at the University of Helsinki, Finland, and colleagues who assisted in writing a brand new study on Comet 17P Holmes. And co-author of that study, Marku Nissanen, an astronomer with the Finnish Ursa Astronomical Association, told Live Science that other comets in similar orbits around the sun do not produce this kind of large periodic outbursts. So the 17P Holmes itself is probably special. In order to figure out what had happened to the comet's tail, observations of it from the northern and southern hemispheres were taken into account. The team also considered various gravitational influences, and, in particular, how the solar wind would affect the particles and gases throughout each of the comet's orbits since that fateful day in October of 2007. As mentioned earlier, astronomers aren't sure why this comet erupts the way it does, but a running theory is that these outbursts are caused when Comet 17P Holmes' body transitions from a more chaotic and formless structure to something that closely resembles a crystalline one. If this is what we observe happening to Comet 17P Holmes, then that structural transition would release gas trapped within the comet's ice and generate a ton of pressure on its surface. The dust orbits the comet in what has been described as a subtle hourglass shape, and in observations, two lumps of material can be seen around the comet's body with a smaller lump in the middle. Now, normally you'd have to be in the southern hemisphere to see Holmes, but this year you'll be able to see it in the northern hemisphere as well, even if you're an amateur astronomer. The Northern Hemisphere will be able to see Comet 17P Holmes this summer. Mind you, this is not the first time that the comet has been visible to the Northern Hemisphere, but its brightness typically varies in flare-ups like the events of 1892 and 2007 are only periodic occurrences. This year, however, its brightness will be due to one thing point of view. The particles coming off the comet are extremely small, but they reflect a lot of sunlight, making them plainly visible in our night sky. And their brightness depends on where we are in relation to Comet 17P Holmes, meaning that this year we're in just the right spot to observe it. Amateur astronomers reported sightings of the comet in the northern hemisphere as early as February of this year. But when will the rest of us get to see it? July. 
That's right, next month, and probably a little while after that. And as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, it will look like an hourglass in the night sky. You'll want to point your telescopes in the region of the constellation Pegasus. This is also the point where the comet is thought to be the brightest, as the sun's light should catch the comet's particles in just the right way. And real quick, head over to the community tab and vote on this poll asking whether or not you all would like us to make a special section of the ScienceGet Discord so you can all post your amateur astronomy photos of Comet 17P Holmes. To sign up for the Discord, check the link in the description and pick and comment. Figuring out how debris orbits comets like 17P Holmes is going to do a lot more than just tell us where to look in the night sky whenever there's a show. In the future, such models will help us plan science missions to comets in order to collect material and perform scientific experiments. So what do you think? Are you planning on breaking out the family telescope to see Holmes in July? Let me know in the comments down below. If you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, super thanks, and join our Discord community where you can chat with other science nerds like you and suggest future topics for the channel. And hey, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.